Today I'm going to present part of my work, which is uh, impact of a wildfire and clear cut on habitat network in Sweden, uh, in case of Sweden 2018. Uh, uh, wildfire as a nature disturbance and uh, clear cut as planned disturbance, they, you know, they can affect the forest uh, ecosystem directly. But however, but the uh, wildfire and the uh, clear cut, they are in many ways different. For example, like they have different intervals and they have, um, uh, depending on, on the severity, the, the fire can be like have a very wide um, different of effect on forest and the clear cut is normally it happens like um, around 50 years, the, the, the interval time and also uh, normally uh, no trees will be left. So there are different ways of, uh, they, they affect in different ways and uh, there are very limited research about this topic. So uh, about the comparison, how, how, how they affect ecosystem differently. That is why it's very interesting for us to have a look um, let's see uh, uh, some basic information about wildfire. Globally, um, total land been burned per year. It has been like uh, more or less uh, a little bit decreasing. However, it doesn't really mean that it's less and less threatening because in different regions, it tells different story. For example, here in Europe, we can see that um, uh, the number of fires increasing and recently decreasing, but the burn area, it has been up and down, up and down. Um, so that means like some year we have like really big fires and some year, some year it can be like small fires. And here is a case of um, California, USA. And that is what we mostly, uh, heard from media that there are big fires happening in California, for example. So you can see from the right line that the number of fires, it is decreasing. However, if you look at the blue line, which means the area has been burned, it, it, is, it has been kept increasing. So that tells us that there are fewer fires, but bigger fires. Um, but what about the clear cut? So that here is the, it shows like a, the, the neat change in forest area globally, uh, which means afforestation or nature expansion minus deforestation. So we can see that um, in uh, Asia, big part of the Asian or, I mean the blue, uh, the green area, that means the forest has been uh, got a uh, positive increasing. Uh, however, the right color, um, like those uh, in South America or North America, even partly we here, we are here in Sweden, is slightly negative increase, which means it uh, forest has been decreasing. And here is a global, um, globally the neural rate for expansion and deforestation. So we can see that uh, uh, deforestation has been really um, uh, much more than forest expansion here. So it has been keep um, uh, slightly uh, getting better, but still deforestation a lot severe than forest nature expansion. And that is, um, the wood demand globally, it has been keep increasing. So that means, um, yeah, clear cut, it might have more threatening for forest ecosystem still. Um, and here, what about the protected forest area? In uh, 
North America, 11% of forests are protected or in protected area, and 31% in South America, of course, the Amazon area. In Europe, it's 6%. Africa 27, Asian 25, Australia 16. Globally, 18% of forests are underprotected. So those are the basic information I would like to share with you. And what about the case of uh, Sweden? Uh, the summer of 2018 in Sweden, it is marked as um, the warmest summer uh, historically. So unfortunately, a lot, uh, quite some big fires happened. And there are 325 reported forest fires and in total 22,850 hectares uh, was under uh, burned, was burned. And in the, what about the clear cut? So, there are quite a lot stands are uh, clear cut, uh, 57,000 long stands are clear cut, and there are a lot more hectares. Mm -hmm. um, that is um, the size of a uh, fire distribution, also the size of clear cut and the amount of stand, that is how it looks like. We can see that uh, there are several really big fire happened in Sweden. The scale is uh, different from a clear cut. So the clear cut basically there are small stand, but a huge amount. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so when we talk about ecological impact, normally we will um, think about the impact of our coal areas. Uh, those are the areas that are important so for flora and fauna in need of protection. Also, we will uh, think about the continuous forestry, which are the forest that, had, that has not been clear cut. And also the forest, the key bell tops. Those are the areas that are significantly important for forest of flora and fauna also. So those are the that has higher biodiversity value, let's say. So it's highly important. So that's why we, we will um, uh, take a look at how fire and clear cut affect on those areas. But in this case study, we only focused on the forest core areas. Um, and about the primary forest, they, are, they, they can be Mostly they are forest core area and they are all continuous covered and they are kind of at the same time uh, belongs to like a key bell tops also. Um, yeah, we have uh, in this uh, case, in this project, we have a uh, four case study area. You see these four uh, blocks for square distributed in Sweden. Uh, in different location. And the right square here up north, which is uh, close to an Arctic circle, so it's really up north. And we have a case study area in middle Sweden. That, though, this is the area that big fires, a lot of big fires happen, you, you can see. And also we have a case study around the Stockholm area. Those are the most um, population density area. And also we have a, a case in south, southern Sweden. Uh, the difference is that here up north, the forests are more or less uh, conifer dominated. And in the south part, they're more uh, mixed forest. So they're different type of forest. Um, yeah, about the digital tool. So we're gonna spend some uh, minute here, perhaps. Uh, I'd like to explain to you um, uh, different species, they have different uh, haptic air requirements and they have different uh, uh, moving uh, capacity, moving distance. And those are the properties that define how, the ha how their habitat looks like. And um, 
So in reality, some patches which are habitats, but it doesn't really mean they are all um, useful or valuable or can be uh, habitat for long run. So it has to be, we have to think, think about the connectivity. If some of them like uh, isolated or fragmented from the habitat, then from the whole network, and in the long run, it will lost the value of being um, a habitat, a patch. And um, yes, so we use a virtual species as indicator species for our uh, ecological assessment uh, tool. Um, why we use virtual species instead of a real species? Well, it's because, first of all, the real species, um, normally um, the data are not always available. Um, and secondly, the uh, for, for real species, the data are full of uncertainty also. For example, even the same species in different uh, season, they may be behaving differently. Like while they're during their breeding, they, they can move perhaps longer or shorter distance, uh, longer distance or short. I mean, um, also depending on the, of course, depending on the resource availability. So um, it's always, um, uh, we can't really like very sure about their moving capability. That's that is why uh, also like the real species sometimes um, is difficult to, to have a, a, a data. And then we uh, we use virtual species. Um, then we take into consideration about their population density and also fecundity uh, to model their. The, the size of their habitat patch. And also with the moving distance, we will look at the connectivity. So for example, here, uh, the population density and the carrying capacity, and uh, I, I mean, the of each patch, um, like depending on their reproduce, fecundity means like how, how, how many they're gonna have uh, new babies um, and they're in, immigration rate and all those properties, if you decide the patch size of their habitat and then the dispersal probability and distance, we, we, will, we, take, we use it to calculate the connectivity. So here, for example, if a small patch, because it's too small, it cannot support the whole population, then eventually it won't count as a habitat. And here is another simple example if this too far away from um, that they cannot reach there or even like for the daily movement they need to they need to go back for example during the breeding season they need to go back to feed the baby so that is the distance uh, is too long then it will lose the function as habitat also so this is a, uh, just a uh, simple example of our tool of our model and then uh, yeah here is how how we uh, calculate the whole habitat network. Uh, those are the size of the patches and the PIG is, uh, is the connectivity between the patches. Yeah, uh, we use uh, Earth ob observation data as input data and uh, for our tool. And then the output data will be um, spatially and statistically the impact on habitat. Let's have a look at the result. Um, yeah, here is uh, the result from the north, from the, 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 the north, the far north square. Uh, we can see that um, uh, wildfire actually play a big role in this case study, in this, case, in this area. That means if you look at the right bar, that means after wildfire, the habitat network, uh, the equivalent habitat area has been shrinking like that much. And there are not so many clear cut happened inside the protect area, the coal forest coal area. So the impact from clear cut is not so big. So eventually the accumulated um, impact are pretty much linked with 
wildfire, the impact from wildfire. And um, for Stockholm area, uh, it's another story that uh, for like uh, forest wildfire and clear cut, they are more or less affect equally the equivalent habitat area. But we need to see that the accumulate cumulative impact it is much more than it's much more than just add them together. So that means the cumulative impact from both wildfire and clear cut it should be in highly concerned. And the 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 case of, from southern Sweden again is a different story. Here the wildfire didn't really affect too much about the habitat the network. However, the clear cut, the clear the impact from clear cut uh, has a lot of impact. So eventually, the cumulative uh, impacts are pretty much linked with clear cut. But in those areas, uh, because the forest coal area basically in general is not so many uh, coal area, so uh, it can be like uh, the impact the clear cut. And really, uh, I mean, the, the ecosystem can be really vulnerable. Uh, and uh, the last case, that is where the big fires happened. So unsurprisingly, of course, the big impact is from white fire. And it's, the habitat has been shrinked a lot. Um, and the, the final cumulative uh, impact is basically from wildfire because there are not so many clear cut happening there. So that means fire may lead, lead to extinction of local populations. Uh, yeah, so you can see that the four case study tells four different stories. So what, what the key notes from this um, case study all right, so wildfires as um, nature disturbance, it can happen randomly without planning in anywhere in the forest, protected or unprotected area. However, the clear cut as man-made uh, disturbance, it can be planned and, it, and it, then it can be like a plant with a good planning and with less ne negative environment impact. Um, but however, it's hard to say that wildfire has more ecological impact than clear cut or vice versa, because it depends on the size of habitat patches that are burned or clear cut. And it also depends on the location of the habitat patches and the fair or clear cut. Um, and the, the community impact from both wildfire and clear cut should be highly in concern, because um, imagine a, 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 in a forest, if it not just uh, have only wildfire happened, uh, it might be the same time clear cut, clear cut happened also. And for the species, they both impact them the same time. So we can't just see sep separate them for in, in reality. And for the future study, it can be very different if we if the case study is on. Um, primary forest or continuous cover forest or even entire forest instead of uh, only the coal protected area that we did for this case study. So it's going to be really interesting to see in a different forest type, uh, type of forest and how the result looks like. Uh, yeah, I think that is what I want to share for today.